In this lesson, I'll be simplifying the React use effect hook. The use effect hook is one of the fundamental hooks in React. And most of the times when you're building React applications, you would use use effect. And if you don't use it correctly, it can result in poor performance of your application. So in this lesson, I'll be helping you understand how this hook works. I'll be seeing some examples of how to use this hook correctly. Back to my application, I'm going to run the development server. And now I have the application running here. So the only change I have made from the previous lesson is that I introduced this new component called use effect examples. This is the component file here and this is the style. And then if you go to app.gsx, I commented the other things that we had previously. So if I should not comment that, you can see we had this previously. So I just commented that here and then I used the component. I just created use effect examples. Now to understand the use effect hook, you need to understand what side effects are. Side effect is a concept that applies to programming generally. And I have have a lesson where I talked more about what side effects are in the context of programming using some JavaScript examples. I'll link that video below so you can check it out. But side effects in the context of React is also similar. And a good way to understand side effect is if a function is doing something outside the scope of that function, then that thing it is doing can be called a side effect. Some people would also call it just an effect. So let me give you a quick function example here. Let's say we have a function called print and maybe this function takes a first name argument and then here we have console.log first name now in this case this is the side effect and why is this the side effect well that is because console is not in the scope of this function let's say in this function you had another function called sum now, if you come here and you use sum 10 and 20, this is not a side effect. Sum was created in the scope of this print function. But when you look at this console object, this is not created in this print function. It is coming from outside the function, which in this case, it's a browser API. So this is a simple idea of what side effects are. When a function is utilizing something outside its scope, then that is an effect. An effect because this function function cannot control how the console object works because the console object is coming from outside the function. I'd recommend you check out that video I mentioned earlier because I dived deeper into it. Now coming to the context of React, when you do something in a React component that is outside the scope of that component or outside the scope of React, then that is a side effect. And the most common examples you would find under the side effect are things that comes from the browser API. You have the console object you have the fetch API, you have even your document object where you can do document dot get element by ID, get element by class name, your set timeout, you have your set interval, you have your local storage and a lot more examples. So when you are utilizing any of these things here, that is known as a side effect in the context of that React component because all of these things are not in the scope of a React component. Now, why does this even matter? Why do you need to know what side effects are. Well, you need to know what side effects are because if you don't manage side effects correctly, they can affect the rendering of your component. And that is why you want to manage it correctly. This is where the use effect hook comes in because use effect allows you to manage those side effects safely without affecting the rendering of your component. And just like I mentioned in the previous lesson with the use effect hook, you can also run code at the different phases of a component's life cycle. Now let's see simple examples of side effects. In this button, we have an ID with my button. Now let's say you wanted to query this button from the DOM. Get element by ID and then you pass my button. Console log button lm. Now if I go to the console, what you see here is null. Why are we getting null when we query the button, even when we actually have a button with an ID of my button? Well, what is happening here is that React runs this side effect before it renders this on the DOM. So how do you ensure that this line is run after this has been rendered on the DOM? Well, this is where you can use the use effect. So let's look at the syntax of the use effect hook. You have your use effect, which you import from React. The first argument is the the 
function, the function which contains the side effect. And the second argument is the dependencies. This is going to be an array which would contain values that this use effect depends on. We we'll look at the dependencies in a second. So let me just take this out for now. For this function, I can just pass an anonymous function. Here I'm using an arrow function. You can also use a regular function if you want. So I'll keep this as an arrow function. And now if I should take this from here and put it in this use effect, what's going to happen is that React is going to run this function when the component is mounted and also if the component re-renders. So now if I go to the console, because this is run after the component is mounted, you can see that we are now able to query the documents for the my button and you can see that my button here. Like I said, this use effect would also be run when the components will render. So let's say we have some state at the top here. I'm going to keep a state for show box. So set show box. And then I can use the use state hook. We have already looked at the use state hook from the state lesson. And let's just say this is true by default. Now, when you click on this button, I'm going to have my own click. I'll pass my callback function and here this is going to call set show box which means when you click on this button show box will become false then it will become true then false and as we have already seen as the state updates the component will re-render and then let's say i also conditionally render this block if show box is true render this but if show box is false it's not going to render now let's go back to our console so you can see that the use effect runs here when the component is mounted now when i click on toggle box the show box state is updated the component re-renders and when it re-renders you can see we have another console log here like i said this use effect will be run when your component is mounted and every time your component re-renders in some cases you don't want your use effect to be running every time this is where you can use the dependencies array so the dependencies array is what the use effect would depend on before it runs again but if you pass an empty dependency array what this means is that run only when the component is is mounted if the component re-renders don't bother running now if we go back to the console you can see that this runs the first time the component is mounted but if i click on toggle box and i'm updating the state and the component is re-rendering you can see that we do not get any logs in the console now let's say we had another state so here i'm going to create another button randomize color then here i'm going to keep a state for random color now if we go back to pricing cards if you remember i created this randomizing function so now i'm going to put this function somewhere where i can reuse it so in src i can create a folder called helpers and in this helpers i can create array.js take this from here and put it in array.js and i can export it come here now and import randomize r from helper slash array and then i can come to my use effect examples and also import randomize r helper slash array so here once you click on this button what we're going to do is we'll first get our random color where we call randomize r by the way i also need to create an array of colors here so let me just say colors hash 333 brown purple so i get my random color by passing that colors array and then i can set random color to be this random color for this section now i'm going to apply a style here by background color to be the random color this should not be true so by default let's say the random color is the first color so i'll use the colors array with an index of zero and now i can come to my style here and remove this background color so this returns an array and I can just get the first item from the array. So now when you come here, you click on random color, you can see that the random color is changing. So now in my use effect, I can say, I only want to run this use effect again if the show box state changes so this is not only going to run on mount it will run on mount and anytime that dependency changes so now if i come here you can see first it is mounted we have this now i click on randomize color you can see we don't have any log here again no matter how many times i click on randomize color it never runs but the moment i click on toggle box now you can see the use effect runs again i click on toggle box the use effect runs again but once i click on randomize color it doesn't run so this is where the dependencies comes useful because you can define at what point do you want the use effect to run? Now let's look at another side effect example. If I come to this JSON placeholder, this is where I get a free testing API. So let's just say I copy this part and I wanted to render 
the result here now you might think okay why not just put it directly in the component like this so you fetch and maybe you want to have a variable called data and then here you can now say data is equals to json we're going to get all of the to do's now if i come here and i do console.log data and let's say i want to render that data just below the randomized color and then i pass the data and then i can comment this one for now so if i refresh you can see that data is undefined why is it undefined well as you know with promises and the fetch api here returns a promise promises are not resolved immediately they are resolved asynchronously so this is going to be resolved later on but by the time it's resolved the component has already been rendered on the dom and at the time it was rendered data was undefined well now you might think okay maybe use async await so that instead of the promise to be resolved asynchronously it is resolved synchronously but once you come here and then you put export default async function now you're going to get an error from react because your component is not supposed to return a promise by putting async here you are saying that this is going to be an asynchronous component and now you have an error if we look at the error you can see here it says objects are not valid as a react child and it's found a promise object so how do you run your api in such a way that you can get your data and you can also render that data on the dom this is where you can use use effect again you can also use multiple use effects just like you can use multiple use state so here we can have another use effect i'm going to put that i want this to run only on mount i can now take this from here put it down here i'm going to remove this async i can remove this data then i can keep state for the data so here i'm going to have data set data and by default the state of this data is null and then here i can now call set data and pass the json so let's say i come here now to do console.log data and now we're going to get an error because this data is an object so what we want to do is call json stringify i'll put an indentation of two now that i do this you can now see we have this data now if we should go to the console what you see is initially the data is null because our default state for the data is null but then when this use effect is run and the data from the api is resolved we now call set data by passing that data it's going to update the data state with the json which will cause a re-render and in that re-render the data will now hold the current json and here you can see we have an array of 200 items which we also rendered on the dom here so you can see how the use effect hook allows you to manage your side effect if you just put your side effect directly in your component it may not work as you expect but with this use effect you can ensure that it is run at the right time or at the right phase of the component's life cycle and then now you can put a dependency for this use effect if you want this use effect to run every time show box changes you put that as a dependency and every time the show box state changes then this use effect will be run this this other use effect would only be run on mount but here we have one dependency and then use effect can look once this dependency changes then run this use effect again now your dependency doesn't only have to be state because here we have show box state your dependency can also be a prop let's say this use effect examples is receiving a show heading prop from the parent component you can also put show heading here and let's say we go to app.gsx now we can pass this show heading that is coming from app.gsx we can pass it to the components here so show heading and let me now uncomment everything that we had before i'm going to go back here and i'm just going to comment this part let's just use console log for now so here we're going to do console.log json and i'm going to remove the console log data and before i show you how the dependency works let's make this empty now if i come here you can see that this use effect is run the first time and we get our data here now if we click on update states which as we have seen so far when you click on update state this is going to call this update states function which is then going to update the show heading to true or false click on this update states you can see the heading is not showing but our use effect doesn't run again because our use effect only ran when the component was mounted if the component is re-rendered because the parent component is re-rendered the use effect would not run 
run again click on state again and the heading is showing this doesn't run again but if i come here and then i put show heading now if i should refresh you see when the component is mounted we have this when you click on update states and that show heading state is updated and passed as prop to the use effect examples component you can see that the use effect hook runs again so the dependency doesn't have to be a state in the component directly it can be a prop or it can be any variable that is subject to change so let me go back to app.gsx and comment all of this part for now now we have just this i can remove the show heading prop now when it comes to dependencies in use effect you don't want to be passing dependencies that you do not need why do i say this okay let's say we pass a dependency like show box the question here is why why does this use effect depend on the show box value in this case it doesn't because in our use effect we are not making use of show box so we don't need to run this use effect every time show box changes but then let's say maybe as part of our api we have a url where we pass show box and we pass the show box value now in this case you can see that in our use effect we are passing show box right if you look at this api we are using show box here now because we're using show box here then we have to pass show box as a dependency this is an example of a reactive value in react so when you have a reactive value in your use effect then you want to pass that as a dependency a reactive value is a value that is subject to change and because show box is subject to change then you want to run this use effect anytime show box changes the same thing applies to random color Let's Let's say as part of your api you are passing the random color parameter then you also want to come here and pass random color as a dependency you can even see here that i have a warning and if i check this warning you can see react hook use effect has a missing dependency random color how does it know that it's a missing dependency well that is because the use effect hook depends on random color we use it in our api here so you have to put random color as a dependency here so that anytime random color changes then you want to run your use effect again which will call this api with the new value of random color in this case putting a dependency like show box it doesn't make sense because this use effect doesn't use show box so even if show box changes you are still going to get the same result when you run this but then let's say maybe as part of your json maybe you are doing something with show box here if i should remove this show box from here now you're going to see again we have a missing dependency show box because we're using this value here then you want to depend on that but if we're not using it then it doesn't have to be a dependency so dependencies aren't just something you should be using anyhow because just like i mentioned at the beginning of this lesson the use effect hook is very useful but when you use it wrongly then that can potentially affect the performance of your application if this use effect is depending on dependencies that it shouldn't depend on wow depending on dependencies that it shouldn't depend on if it is depending on dependencies that it shouldn't depend on then this use effect will be running multiple times and in this case this would also be updating the state so anytime the use effect runs the state updates and state updates you don't want to be doing that when you don't need to so your dependencies should contain the reactive values that you use in the effect so i hope this lesson gives you a good introduction and understanding and shows you the application of the the use effect hook and i hope you can see why it is useful i hope you now understand why this helps you manage your side effects better now you're probably thinking why was i able to use console.log outside a use effect well even though the console is an effect or a side effect in the context of react this doesn't really cause any problem your console.log is going to run immediately so in this case it doesn't affect your components in any way so it is safe to put a side effect like this outside the use effect but then when it comes to the fetch api as we saw or document.get element id or other browser apis that can potentially disrupt the rendering of your component then you want to put that in a use effect now there is still more to cover when it comes to the use effect hook for example using an object as a dependency of a use effect hook can cause problems or situations that you do not expect also when it comes to use effect you have something called a clean up function now we're going to be looking at this in the upcoming lessons but again i hope that this lesson really helps you understand how the use effect hook works in react